Welcome everybody to week four of the Paladins Premier League. It is time for more action to continue here with Paladins. My name is Latigris, joined on the desk by Gormizer. How you doing? I'm excited to see what's coming through. I mean, we've been seeing these teams adapt for weeks now, and I feel like we're finally getting to the point where they're in the nitty gritty. They know what they want. They know the drafts they have. So this is where it gets, I want to say, a little bit more intense. Well, for anybody that's been tuning in for the first time, let's go ahead and give a little bit of information about the league and how the PPL is structured. So first things first, we do have a particular format here for you. Five weeks of competition, double round robin format, best of five sets. So every team will face every other team twice within this split. And then throughout the year, we have many events that are ahead for you, including these wonderful lands. We've got the PPL Spring Finals, Masters, All-Stars, and Summer Finals. And to top it all off, these players do have salaries given to them, 20K salary, with the land performance bonus. So that extra motivation besides bragging rights to do very well within these tournaments. I know these teams have been fighting with one another throughout the first three weeks, and that's kind of where things were shaky, trying to figure out top seed and everything. And with that, taking a look at the standings of how Europe has done thus far, Fnatic sitting at the top, no losses to their name. Navi getting their first loss against Fnatic last week. Ninjas in pajamas right there in the middle, followed by Mouse Sports with their first organization win in the PPL and Virtus Pro rounding it out. I'm really interested to see how some of these, I want to say the bottom three overall in Europe are starting to adapt just because everything, every time they go up against NIP or Fnatic, it looks as the, not necessarily hopeless, but mm. you just see, I want to say the caliber of player that comes from those top teams in Europe. So being able to kind of adapt to that, figure out where you stand as a team and potentially get yourself a nice upset somewhere in the schedule. Yeah, and we've got four matches for you today, as per usual, starting off with our headline match between NIP and Fnatic. Then we got Navi and Virtus Pro, Navi and Mouse Sports, and then NIP and Mouse Sports. I'm excited to see Mouse Sports again later. I feel like that first win is a really good kick to get that drive going again, where it's just like, we were hungry for a win, now we have one, we got one against a team that admittedly people were saying, this is going to be the team we get a win against. Now let's prove that it's not just them. We can get one maybe against NIP, maybe against Navi. It's not as likely, but it's still something they can pull out. And it always feels great when you get your first win within a league, and I'm sure there's some momentum that comes with that. But then you also want to continue. You don't want to stop at that point in don't time. You want to count to one and not hit two. Right. But first up on the docket, I mean, it's Fnatic versus NIP. Ninjas in Pajamas have kind of been in that weird struggling boat where they're clearly a top-tier team, but then every time they're facing Na'Vi and facing Fnatic, then it's been difficult for them. I am excited to see this entire team coming through. You can see maybe missing a name that you might recognize normally. No Lazy Ubers Patey coming from the PGS, going to be stepping in here. And I'm excited to see how he fits. He's one of those players, namely, that I have seen a lot of overall. He always makes good plays, and this is the chance to be able to prove yourself that next level one more step. Yeah, so no Lazy being on the roster currently, and we actually don't really have any insight onto that particular situation. Uber's going to be making his premiere here in the Paladins Premier League, but Bonker, it's not his first time around the block. He's shown out in the past. Yeah, honestly, if you want a crew that is going to be able to kind of help lift you up, I feel like Bonker being able to kind of show you the ropes, I want to say, being able to say, look, this is you know DPS, this is where we're going to be going. This is kind of the general NIP that you want. He's one of the best players to follow. Yeah, I mean, I always love seeing Bonker going bonkers for the team. And as you can see in these Bomb King highlights, really the potential to just stack things up for the rest of the team. And with a strong roster, it's important to have that level of reliable nature yeah. for your players. And honestly, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, we're going to be seeing Uber's Fady kind of take this role where he's joining in with NIP, but... It's still kind of running, you know, four-man show. Trying to fill in for Lazy is going to be, like, that's a big shoe to fill. Bonker being the one, I would say, out of the rest of them to really step up. Of course, Bird being able to kind of analyze where everybody's going, try to fit it all together. But I feel like Bonker is going to be that next step. He has to kind of bring a little bit more today than he's been bringing the last few weeks just because they're missing a pretty big piece. Yeah, anytime you have a roster shakeup, it's going to be a difficult to kind of find your footing, especially when it's partway through a split. But on the opposite end, you have Fnatic that has been killing the game throughout the season. They have all the consistency going in their favor with these all-stars right here. And 
even though with the recent addition this season with is Bittner and you have the pretty face of him now in that lineup, yeah. then they've still just been looking like a continuous collective. No longer a silhouette. I feel like I, I want to say that maybe it's just he earned it based on the way he's been playing <laughs> these past few weeks. Like you, you, you get a picture now. <laughs> you get a picture. You earned it. The rest of the team has been able to do that. And Bugsy, the one standing front and center, has been super phenomenal. I mean, we saw a performance at Worlds that was really good. Fnatic as a whole not being able to step up. But since then, especially with the way the meta has shifted, a lot of the champions he plays have really risen to the top. Bring in Kness out on things like Frog Isle, Sniper action, but then Cassie action. There's a lot of tools within his arsenal that have allowed Fnatic to kind of go back to that comfort zone of triple DPS that is something that they were capable of doing before it was even meta. And I'm really excited because his sniper play, I feel like, was one of the things that it came out during PWC. It was one of those things that we kind of saw it gradually take place from the beginning towards the end of the tournament as it kind of came in. Mm -hmm. And now that that has become more meta, being able to have a Strix or a Kness a little bit more often, I feel like Bugsy's being able to highlight that a lot. And also look at that KDA, 164.71. Uh, you go, He's Bugsy, killing. you go. Yeah. <laughs> and killing lots of people. <laughs> dying not as much that's always what you want to go for <laughs> but i mean because these stats are accumulated over time yeah. then it always looks kind of weird when okay yeah i mean there's going to be a lot of dust each person but 71 that's really a could go, pretty impressive you could go two and ten in a game and then the next one you could go 20 and two and <laughs> the stats get padded as time goes on either way he's sitting up over a 2.0 and that's honestly really impressive as time has been able to go on to be able to accrue that just showing again how comfortable of a player he is and honestly how comfortable Fnatic seem to be feeling. And so Bright Marsh and Frozen Guard taken off the table. And this should be an interesting match. I mean, last time we saw them, Fnatic 3 owed NIP. And then NIP took the next week to get a couple wins under their belt. And we're going to Jaguar Falls first. But these are players that are very familiar with each other. We have former teammates that have been in opposition this split. And names that have been here since the beginning of time with Paladins. It's going to be... Rough, it's gonna be man. <laughs> Not quite yet. We still have some days left, <laughs> but it's just gonna be rough. I mean, when you're coming into this NIP, obviously looking for a lot of wins and Fnatic defeatless, and then you come into the fact that, hey, look, we are going up against you with a new member on your team. You have a lot that you need to put into this game in order to even find some point wins. I'm excited to see how things go down in this set because there's some factors that we just really don't know how they're going to shake out some players that have given us flashy plays in the past i don't know if we're going to get another quadra i'd like to see one but as far as the bands go taking out a couple of the key frontliners and then cassie as well torvald has still been getting somewhat of an ulcer treatment in eu as far as being on the banning specifics and on this map in particular because there's Nice places for him to not just kill people off, but in the defense or offense right at the end of a push, very imperative. And honestly, I feel like this is one of those things that we've noticed certain maps he won't get banned and then he won't get picked up. Certain maps he's, you know, the first ban you want to get rid of him. And I feel like that's going to be traveling around. Since Jaguar Falls is pretty decent for flanks already, you don't want to give him that extra push. And like you mm -hmm. said, that, that ult being able to push people away. And of course, with the way things have been going, Genos plus flank or Pip, just in general, you don't want to give them the ability to survive any longer. We've seen teams gravitate towards picking up Genos as early as possible here, being the first pick, or even getting banned away by some teams, because with triple DPS coming into the equation, Luminary on top of those picks is just a wonderful combination to try and burn down all of your enemies. But Pip's also been popular as of late, too. I mean, just being able to bring people big burst heal and then big mm -hmm. burst damage, and of course, Evil Mojo, which is... Yeah, ideally one of my favorite abilities in the game, but also very, very useful when they have anyone that might be super tanky. If you have, you know, like an Anara, a Terminus on the other side, he just shoots once and all of a sudden they can be dead and within seconds. Yep, and Terminus gets locked in. We don't know exactly the direction NIP is going with the rest of their draft, but they get that Zin as well. Zin Genos, a particularly powerful combination, even though Genos works with a lot of people. And then on the side of Fnatic, Buck and we know is Bittner loves himself some buck. I really like the way Fnatic have gone through this draft. Because they're like, all right, here's our front line. If we're going solo front line, we can stick with it. If we're not, we'll save it for the last. Here's a couple of damage, and here's our healers. What do you want to do? Like, what are you going to pick? Because that can drive where we're going with this. Do we want another front line? 
Do we want another flank? Do we want someone who's just going to be a main DPS? We can really flex around with it, and just being able to kind of control that puts NIP in this precarious situation where they don't know how to pick up things in the right order, I guess. And they get the Maldamba in addition to the Inara, so that combination is available. And it's double support on both sides, Grok being the pickup for NIP. Talus is the last lock-in. What do you think of these drafts? I'm interested to see what NIP can do. It's a really solid lineup. Grok being, I want to say, the most shaky, which is really weird to say, considering just a couple metas ago, he was front and center with a lot of these teams. But Barrack on the rise, Terminus very solid, and the Genos-Zen combo is not something to scoff at. All right, well, everyone, it's time to get into our first game of the day. Don't forget to share your thoughts on everything using hashtag PPL on Twitter because we'll be taking a look at that in the meantime. Let's go ahead and send it over to Rain Day and Pretty Hair. Thanks, Gabby. Rain Day, Pretty Hair here to cast and get you through the action of game number one here in our EU PPL. It's a beautiful Saturday, and Nick, you know, you got to be feeling good. There's a lot of pollen in the air, a lot of beautiful stuff that's just it's making us feel all invigorated. Pollen, uh, you know, most people are allergic to it, but it actually sure. strengthens me, you know, Superman to the sun type of relationship. Gotcha. Absolutely. Same. Same. I'm totally getting stronger as a result of this pollen. If you guys hear me sneezing, it's because I don't know what George is about, <laughs> but get me back to L.A. in this time of the year because I, I can't handle it. Ninjas in pajamas and Fanatic, who do you think is going to win? And I IP with a like and, of course, a heart for a fanatic. This is an old blood kind of rivalry. It's a, it's a relationship where, honestly, we've seen go both ways as far as results. Yeah, not recently, though. Fanatic have been on top in this, and when you've got the stand-in for Lazy, you've got to wonder how both teams are approaching this because, you know, Fanatic, they didn't really be super decisive. They let Jin, Zin Genos go, something that did not happen at all last weekend. So it's almost like... Yeah. What are you guys planning on doing? You know, they drafted you know, pretty safely, I, I think, overall. But Fnatic, it'll be interesting to watch them uh, sort of play around this major roster change for Ninjas in Pajamas. And, and looking at NIP, you know, they've got the Geno Zin. But outside of that, they don't have a ton of win conditions. There's not. And that's absolutely, that's absolutely true. They take the Inara and the Pip, notably grabbing those two. They work so well together. The Mega Potion style of play, even Catalyst. And when you have Inara, who's a, a basically negating Cauterize 2 at the base when she has Earth and Guard, you get Rejuvenate 3, Cauterize doesn't exist for Thiel late game. So you got to make sure to notice. That's why he's starting with that Rejuve 1. It is so important, especially with the absolute incredible amounts of healing Fischeko is going to bring to the table. Here's the cool thing about Uber Spady, though. Like, the fact that he is the stand-in for this team, but they're giving him the Zen. They are giving him a really the pick that is going to make this roster succeed right oh, yeah. now for Ninjas in Pajamas. Bonker, Peridot, Shifa all playing, you know, uh, supports and front lines aren't exactly going to be commanding the frags on the field. Bending Spirits here, keeping Thiel nice and healthy, rotating as well with the movement speed from Swift Spirits. Peridot getting low, and obviously this Grok, not much to do against the Rock. The Stone Warden throws the Warder's field down as well not running treacherous ground notably so might be an earthen guard here with a mother's grace just to be able to sustain and grab that cc immunity and they're going to be chunking their way easily through ninjas of pajamas so far so good they found the frag on the grok Thiel throws the wall up uh, and then turns back to his target at hand this terminus swinging away but bittner and fnatic just feeling like they are, are, are very cool with what's happening they're in control it's almost like all right we knew that was coming this is how we're going to deal with it and 69 percent counting to their name if they get it to 100 obviously they'll capture objective number one but uber spady's trying to get back in there the sub today or the re replacement today for what we know is lazy on this roster, taking control of the Zen. The Grok Totem is there, but it is a Catalyst Pip here, so fasheko has got some damage to lay into that corner. They need to get out, but here's Uber Spady laying in a couple of good slices with the sword from Yomi. Deal could be with the first uh -oh. one to fall here. He's falling lower and lower, but he does have those heals just trickling oh through, my. and there's not enough anti-heal in the world this early on in the game. Uber not looking like he's going to be able to accomplish a whole lot more in this fight. And I mean, I love how he saw it. He missed that last Yomi slice in he, as he was backing up the staircase to go into the dark room. It could have secured it, but Fnatic, they take that one relatively easily, you have to say. Looking at this game, it seems the pace has never shifted towards NIP. In fact, they haven't really had an identity as far as where they wanted that point fight to go, it looked like. And, and Grok hasn't been a su super successful champion so far, but it's an interesting pick. You have to be wondering uh, what Ninjas and Pajamas are thinking today with the, with this roster. What are they going to be able to pull off? Or what are they feeling confident in, in pulling off with this, uh, you know, you can't say crippled exactly, because uh, Uber Spady is a great player. He wouldn't be here if he wasn't. Yeah. And he does share a, a decent champion pool overlap with Lazy. Very good DPS player. You, you find him on the EVs, you find him on Blasters, as well as the Cassie's Shalons. You play everything. And uh, extremely good, obviously flexing on his end. Tries to make the play there. And I like that NIP have Ooh. today said that, you know what, it's time to let Uber Spady make a play. Right now, though, Jarrah's making all of them. This guy made plays last weekend. 
Help Fnatic gets it first. <laughs> he definitely made a name for himself. If he didn't already have one, a lot of new fans in the scene might recognize this name more easily now. 123 left on the clock. Bittner on a nine streak. All of Fnatic with some type of streak burning, except for a little fishy there. Who doesn't play a ton of pips, so it's it's cool to see him to get to flex onto something like that. And this is a good this is a good matchup for them. You gotta say, despite NIP obviously having the best of hopes for this game, doesn't feel like Fnatic would be too worried about this roster swap. It feels like, you know, you'd have to prove to us that you're there. Bonker melts under the dome shield. Not something you often see for a barrack. That's supposed to buy him some time, but nothing being bought here. Finally, Uber Spady comes into the fray to tag for Sheko, but it's too late. And it's a 2-0 Fnatic start. They keep just about every ultimate online as well. Bittner the only one popping his, the Buck Wild. Everyone else looking good, feeling good. Caught ones online across the board for Ninjas in Pajamas. Uber the only one able to get his caught two online. And you know, that could help. There was almost a kill for Ninjas in Pajamas on the objective fight. But everyone in the corner, as well as the fact that Fnatic have already picked up two bulldozers yeah. to deal with this Grok totem. And that's a very effective way. Who needs cauterize when you can just blow up the totem super easily out of the gate? And that's the thing with, with Genos, right? Bird playing him, obviously the Luminary, a big component of why he's so good. But when you're comparing it to the straight burst of Sheko's kind of secondary utility heal and the core healing of Maldamba, the sustain is just so far in the advantage for Fnatic. NIP pick up that Grok to try and help this situation out, but it doesn't really seem to be working and not providing enough damage or peel as well. 12% already on the objective. These NIP frontliners starting to encroach their way there, but there's a big evil mojo. No one gets fried off of it. It may have run actually straight into the CC immune totem. Oh, nice stuff from Bird, though. Finds his Bittner. Comeback mechanic in their favor. They will capture a little faster. Jera using that extra slither distance to his advantage there. Tries to heal that little oh. fishy, and he does. Those fishes still swim upstream, except now Theo actually falling. Terminus getting some revenge with Sheepa. Controlling Big Daddy. Sheba's definitely hitting the gas pedal here. He's got his ultimate available, so he's okay. I think if he's going to go down here, he's coming right on back up. Won't find any kills, but of oh, course, coming back to the battlefield beautiful. is value in and of itself. That was a beautiful play because he gets the overtime. No other way to do it. And now Bird is very low. Fischek goes back. No one's looking at him, and they've got to stand near the point. Maybe Bittner. NIP want to just back off here. The problem is they don't <laughs> have a chance to. There's so much damage. Everyone's forcing the fight, and this may still go the way of Fnatic. You could tell that there, there's a DP player deep within <laughs> Fischeko <laughs> takes his time healing up Bittner who goes on to find the quadra kill anyway so it's all calculated it's all well and good for Fnatic orange and black in the driver's seat in game one and that retake does not happen comeback mechanic it's too far the zone is very good she has the right idea but the true power from Talis that is the saving grace goes straight to the point where Bird is sitting what a wall from Thiel and that's going to secure it for Fnatic. Gosh, some heartbreak in between a couple of good moments for NIP there. You got to love the Inara on Jaguar Falls. I mean, Deal has been such a superstar on this tank for this lineup. Doing the single front line thing before it was cool. And this just feels like it is Fnatic's meta. And I, I couldn't be happier for this team who, you know, despite their, their great online performances, kind of across history, haven't done super, super well out of land, making it uh, to the top the top two, of course, at the World Championship. But Gera now 0-2 on that stage. Bugsy uh, wasn't able to be there the first year, but loses that. And I feel like this could be, if the meta continues to go this way, a very good year for Fnatic. It's definitely, you know, a, a core, core component of that D69 squad, who was obviously not the ones who tasted victory in that first showdown at Paladins World Championship 2017, but always a chance to redeem yourself. Dome Shield coming here from Barrack, a minute and 30 now for Fnatic to push this through, and IP trying to hold. They're going to go for a seismic crash, though. It doesn't get much. It does stall out and deal with the burst from Fischeko, able to get right back into the fray, and this might just be bad for NIP. In fact, it is. Bonker forced to use the boots to run away. Deal's got a set of cooldowns coming up, but Uber, of course, picks up two. Two very important frags, Bugsy and Bittner. The B-Boys in the back line for Fnatic will fall. And a third one, we we said, you know, that's going to be the win condition. You know, Sheep, of course, he gets up in there. He swings the axe. He finds a couple frags every now and then. But it is this Zin that is really going to snowball and result in these hard victories for NIP. Uh-oh, Sheep getting melted there. Bugsy just using the blitz over to reposition. Bonker finds him. Good play, but Spittner's got the angle covered. 48% now. Excuse me, 48 seconds left in a double for Spittner. This is... Not what you want to see. Grok, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Oh my god, another headshot. Man. Spittner's up running, and he's not stopping.
Talk about a great season one from this guy as well. Virtus Pro not really having the, the impact you would want them to have after uh, the way they qualified first seed for the PWC and the way that roster just got shattered in the offseason. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there was a time where he was kind of worried about, you know, where am I going to end up? Where am I going to be sitting in season two? And it seems like he has found a very happy home here in Fnatic who welcomed him with that open arms. And this is one of those where we saw Virtus Pro giving, getting rid of this guy after Elvin Bath talked so highly of him. We said, does that make sense? Is that... That, that's not what I would have thought would have happened, but it ends up happening. And you keep seeing that the talent cannot be hidden. This guy, wherever he plays, makes big moments happen. Thiel, he's one of those as well. Unfortunately, Bonker running into the Warders field. is going to slow him down, but not quite get him out of the fight. Overtime still ticking away, fighting with their last potential breath here. Mm, beautiful totem goes down as well. CC immunity and healing for all. Oh, look at Bonker's health bar. Bounce right back, and NIP will get the first defense of this set, evening up themselves to get a point on the board here against the Willow Fanatic, who, again, same ultimate economy situation after the first round as is after the second bit. They're the only one using Buck Wild there. Everyone else, all the crowd control available for Fanatic, but still no resilience is here on NIP. I want to take a look at Sheepa and Bonker's loadouts to see if they've invested into their, uh, I guess, alternate to resilience. Brave and Bold. Brave and Bold, so there it is. So Bonker doesn't need resilience. He's got Brave and Bold. What about Sheepa? Has he picked up? Forsaken as well. So 70 crowd control reduction for both of those frontliners. They won't have to be too worried about all of the CC, the Evil Five, Mojo, the Dread four, Serpent, Seismic Crash, three, a lot of things two, for Fnatic to control one. these fights. Uh, but maybe those frontliners, not quite the best targets. And for a pip, it works because that, that Brave and Bold level 5 actually gets you to the two second minimum reduction of that ability. So you don't really need Resilience 3 for that. What it will do is it means you won't necessarily always get to that .5, uh, which can help uh, by investing into the Resilience at the level three rate with 90% anti-heal. Seismic crash there as well. This is trying to get things going. The dome shield happens. Sheepa fighting in it, just holding the line, trying to oh. make things a little bit easier for his team, but they get taken down by Fisheko and Bugsy, who collapse at the same time. Bugsy with a double, oh. and Jera finds the last one there. Evan, that's the beauty of the two-second minimum duration. In this type of environment, with that much coordination and burst damage following it up, two seconds is plenty of time to fry. Not one, but two chickens there, and NIP Ultimate's in hand, but I don't know if they really have a hope at coming back. Fischeko does go down. Is this enough? Talus not on the side of NIP, on the side of Fnatic this time around, and that's why they can't get back to the objective. You know, it's unfortunate to see that kind of happen and, and go in the way where Fnatic, they just have this 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 tool in their draft to, to, to overcome that scenario, where NIP just don't, a little bit more uh, lack of mobility on their side with the Barrack, with the Grok, can't get back and get the overtime started. And, you know, taking this uh, this way, way back to, to the Masters land, that was the Bomb King land. And yeah. D69 were the team that figured out how to beat the Bomb King. That's true. They let the Geno Zen go, which is kind of the Bomb King of this meta right now. That's true. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Bugsy and Gera and the boys are, are thinking about what can we beat this. Let's get ahead. They want to stay ahead of the curve here. And, and you know, maybe working a way, a way around it in game one. I think they are trying to really coordinate around this Inara and Pip. And I think this is going to force the conversation conversation of how good is Anara in this meta? I mean, to me, I've been having this thought for the last week. We've been talking about it in PGS, talking about it by ourselves in the in the casting rooms, but the idea of Cauterize not affecting her is, is so monumental, and I, I don't know if anyone's really caught on to that yet from a widespread point of view. You see Steel starting with Re Rejuvenate, gets to Rejuvenate 3, that is literally Cauterize 3 having zero effect mm -hmm. when he puts on that Earthen Guard. The only champion that can do that is Anara. Maybe she's going to get some bans later on. Maybe. All right, let's send it to the desk, see what they have to say about game one here, NIP versus Fnatic. Well, Fnatic was doing Fnatic things. Really looked like they were in their comfort zone. Yeah, it was a point where even with the comeback mechanic, NIP, they get so close, so close, 99%. And then there's nothing you can do when Bittner comes in and gets a quadra kill. Like, you just can't do anything <laughs> against something like that. I mean, that quadra from him was pretty amazing. And then Thiel's always been great on the Inara. And it's been mentioned here on the desk, the casters said it themselves, that Fnatic has been comfortable with this type of composition for a while. And as you can see, Bittner for a long time has been comfortable on this buck. And just the control they had when they approached this. This was a fight that with the comeback mechanic, NIP almost had him. But with the way they approached it, you saw Talus go in with the ult, get the overtime timer set up. Two members of Fnatic immediately move into the point. Bittner comes and gets a quadra kill, which makes things way easier for them in terms of the fight. But they were set up to make that a little bit of a longer process, and it just happened to roll pretty much right into their lap. Yep, so much synergy from the team as well. You saw some evil mojos get value there, and it's just really hard to find cracks in Fnatic <laughs> when they're 
getting onto these picks that they're comfortable with, these compositions that they yeah. know, and at the same time finding ways to innovate and continue moving themselves forward. I will say it's, I think, important to note that NIP did get a point. I mean, it was a defense, but it's still a point for them, which is just something when you're going into it. I mean, you still have four members of this team that have been very successful. So still trying to figure out where they're going. I think a lot of what we saw was a little bit less of them feeling comfortable. Obviously, they still have that little bit of a grace period that they have to get used to Uber's payday. But a lot of it was just Fnatic being Fnatic. Pretty much what you said when we came back was just they look unstoppable. So far, they have been unstoppable. And I don't know if this set's going to change that. And so going into the second game of the set with Fnatic having a great performance in game number one, what do you think NIP needs to take into consideration? A lot of their composition, because, I mean, it was mentioned during the cast, like at the, that little tail end, they didn't have a lot of mobility. They could not really move far fast, and that was one of the big mm -hmm. issues. When they finally got the point, they moved forward, but by the time they were moving forward, Fnatic respawned already back, ready, fighting and pushing them back. So it's just one of those things you need to kind of make sure everything all around is working for your draft instead of having three, maybe even four slow champions that you just can't get aggressive with. And now we're going off to Stone Keep, where if someone wants to bust out the Knessa or somebody, they could, and it just opens up to some other potential strategies. But we'll have to see what approach NIP and Fnatic take. Fnatic is on the first ban, first pick side, and Cassie gets thrown to the wayside. Not surprising as unfortunate as it is for some of these players who love Cassie same mm -hmm. thing goes with Mikoa where no matter how much you like them honestly right now and this was something I think we had said either yesterday or a couple days ago but Cassie's one of those at worst she is going to be reliable damage at best she is getting multi kills all around the game changing it to the point where you don't know how to deal with her so being able to just get rid of her no one has that comfort anymore and Evie got banned away as well and Evie's just been a big topic of conversation within all of our leagues because you have EU, for instance, that have really propelled her forward ever since 68 went through and some players that have had tremendous performances. And then NA, not as much, saw a little bit of it. And then even in the PGS, some of the regions that used to bring her out a lot aren't really coming that way yet. So I like it when we kind of see just that divergence among these regions. Because then when land comes around, we get to see it all crash together. So far, one thing that has been no, noteworthy, I guess, is Genesis Rise being maybe second, maybe third, maybe fourth pick overall, now going up to first. And then other than that, until Fernando, that was pretty much the exact same first three picks with the team swapped and the map changed. Yeah, twice in a row, first pick of the draft. And on the opposite end, you do get the pip. I'm guessing NIP will bring the Maldamba there to secure that extra healing for Inar and whoever they may bring to the table. But yeah, I mean, Fnatic can do a lot with the Genos buck combination. I like the idea of the Maeve here. I kind of wish they had Genos to be able to make it a little bit stronger, but I think Maeve, especially with Fernando and especially with Buck, since they're a little bit tankier, a little bit harder to kill, she has multiple ways to kind of give her some little bit of bonus damage, either 30% mm -hmm. in hand or giving that pounce just a little bit of a harder hit depending on missing health. So. Looking at her talents and the way she can kind of change and flex for this, I think this gives NIP at least one key to try and kill some of the harder to kill targets. And I found it interesting that Buck was locked in earlier than Zinn, thinking, okay, well, that's obviously a comfort pick for one of their players, but still able to get the Zinn to also benefit from the Genos pick. Single front line again, so Theo's going to be on this Fernando, and Barrick is the last one to round it out. If you're going to have a single front line, I'd say that Fernando is probably the best one to have do it because he does equal parts shielding, equal parts killing. So he can really kind of ride that line perfectly, get aggressive. And of course, with the way Fnatic play, that damage is going to be doing a little bit more. And I still feel NIP, I mean, both their front lines don't really, they're not known for their movement. They're not going to be making it very far. <laughs> so I'm interested to see how they kind of accommodate that. Well, we have our pick set, our band set. Everything's good to go. So casters, take it. Well, Sha Lin and Zen, thank you. Thank you for giving it to Sha us, Zin. by the way. We'll hold on to it for now. But Sha Zen. Sha Zen or Sha Zen? Zen Lin? Zen Lin. I like Zen Lin a little better. It does roll. Sha Zen Lin. And that is, that's a <laughs> next champion right there. There's some lore hidden in, in between. It's spicy. What I want to say, though, 
the Zen avoided, not taken, and then the Maeve taken over the Zen. Maybe it's NIP understanding that Maeve might play a little bit more of an impact here if they're not going to run the Guillotine Zen and go for the Yomi. They don't have the Genos, Luminary damage, so Yomi not as good. The Street Justice Maeve deals with Fernando very well. And it is the only frontliner for Fnatic. The only Bulwark of Hope they'll be able to pull up, but they do have, you know, I mean, Zen, plenty of immunity frames, plenty of ways to get in and out of fights. Bucks or the same story there. Shaolin, Mr. Sa Zen, he's, he's chilling. He's going to be in this back line, uh, hopefully surviving this Maeve, and especially given the fact that if she's going to be focused on Fernando with the Street Justice, yeah. you know, he's chilling times too. Bugsy will be free firing this game if Fnatic are really having their way. You know, and I would have said yeah. I would have guessed Finesh, or Fischeko on the on the Shaolin and Bugsy on the uh, on the Zin if I were a betting man. Yeah, I could see that too. I mean, these guys have clearly been swapping and Fischeko getting a time against great players to experiment with some of those changes. Bugsy obviously so flexible, one of the best in the business here. Starting out Stone Keep, high ground taken by NIP. Excuse me, low ground taken by NIP. High ground by Fnatic. Theo looking at his pressure with a fireball. Finds one. Finds another Ooh. run to Sheepa. New ability icons. Fernando looking, looking good. real, real nice. Very Coming red. here. Like it. Very, very red indeed. Cassie, I believe, got some uh, some new ability icons recently as well. But she's not in this game, unfortunately. NIP, their big carry, their big scary Mave taken off the board early. And this is a good shot. Threads wow. the needle. Bugsy helps to finish off Bonker. And now NIP, 39% to their name, but being forced back, Ooh. good. Pounce there, Pruno showing the damage. That, that a main lot of can it, output, man. but it's just not enough to get them back on the point. It's pretty wild. Let's look at Predator's loadout here, if he can survive long enough to show it off here. A little bit of sixth sense, some damage reduction. We saw this earlier, Persistence 5 run by one of the console players as well. You have the potential, you know, only 2,000 HP, but that last 40% yeah. of it is not going to go without a fight. <laughs> it's really not going to go. It's very similar to, to like a Guts Talus build. Right there, you see, look at that. Oh, my God, only hitting for 240. What in the world? Thick boy, deep breath. That's Must a, be. a loadout card for That's Bittner. We could take a look at here. It's Stop basically just after the recovery. He's a little bit tankier to the tune of 40% for three seconds. It's a very good uh, thing when you've got reconstruction and you've just got a lot of recovery to do, a lot of uptime on that. And this is such a comfort pick for him. He ran this a lot for Virtus Pro in season one. Oh, yeah. Until people caught on to it didn't really let him have it. Very, very good because what I love about the buck pick is, you know, you could do your own thing in terms of winning duels. You have a lot more control too. Some champions very like kit based as to why they dominate Zen's kit is just incredibly good. Hitting his shots is kind of like you're expected to do that. Buck can really outplay you by just hitting a good headshot here. Uh, yeah. and, and a lot of game sense too and the patience of how he just is always around. Somebody you have to worry about. Jordy here. Filling up the kill feed once again on Genos. Halfway with the time and space, halfway with the in-hand attacks here. Fnatic tightening the noose on NIP, looking for another 2-0 start. But NIP not looking to let that go without a fight. It's a uh, very difficult time. They've got to come down and contest here. Minute and 23 left. They'll get low, getting healed up by the Astral Mark, though, so that's good for him. Pacheco still swinging away with the Yomi, priming that third shot. Hits Chipa with all three, though, so that melts his half health into uh, pretty much nothing. Uber Spadey. Looking to get down, but can't even hit the ground before the flames incinerate him. Volpines fired. Don't mix well. You know, it's all in. It's risk reward here for the Street Justice Maze. Wow. Pardo goes all in, doesn't get the kill onto Theo. Even if he does, it's not a guaranteed defense for NIP there. So the risk not reaping the rewards. Ultimate still available for NIP, only using the evil mojo to maybe try and get that defense to slow down a little bit. Are we in sweeps week, Nick? It feels like we are in sweeps week here. It's very possible. Could it's a, be. It's an early call. Jordy. Jera finding another double kill here on the through time and space. He found two you know, more. Gera, uh, looking like about half, a, a real shadow of Jera! himself. Something's off this week with, with Gera. Yeah, he's just really not looking himself. I mean, usually we're seeing four. Jera, just only two there. I think you Five. and... The crowd Four, deserves more. When Fnatic three, are, are, are two, looking back at the film here for this one. set, I think that's an easy thing to point out Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Gara only 2-0-11. Uh, I mean, if they want to come out, if they want to beat Navi, Gara needs to be 4-0-11. Honestly, I'm starting to look at the PGS and say, who, who's a healer in the PGS? I could start, like, looking yeah. at room because this is this is not going to work. Jarrah on a 13 streak, though. I guess they'll settle for that. Finding double kills and keeping everyone alive. Seems like he's doing enough. Those buck headshots, man. You're right. They hit hard. 977 from Bittner there. Right there, 1150. 50 with a little help from Jordi Haas. And Perdo, Perdo jumps up, can't even land. This is...
kind of a recurring theme for an IP. 81% oh, on the objective. They full commit to that point fight, which I like when you have the comeback mechanic. I think that's strong, but then they full wipe. None of them are able to retreat, give up some ground, and then get back at it. So this zone may be too powerful here. NIP, they've got Pip and Barrick, two walking head boxes for Bittner. He's having no trouble finding home with those shots. Okay. And the Dread Serpent helps Bittner get out there more than more than anything. 81% for NIP. They're coming back. They're going to give this another shot. But Fnatic are here, and they've got plenty of angles to play with. It's Bittner finds Perdo again before he can hit the ground. Bocker has the dome shield. Great time to use it. They're going to have to back off field, just holding up the shield, getting healed. As usual, everyone on Fnatic is alive, and Fischeko feel... It's Bittner, they find kills, 87%. That's gonna do. They're gonna grab objective number three here That's over at IP and start payload. to push it again. Stop the it gets payload. the entire Buckwild ultimate off there. Not something that's easy to do, but Bittner finds a way. 17 streak and continuing the conquest towards this 4-0 victory. Streak starting to trickle up past the 20 mark here for Mr. Haas in the back line. Genos, plenty of eliminations coming that character's way nowadays. And finding a little hole in the defense here, Fischeko tried to slide in, but he'll need to swim his way back out to safety. He's looked good on the, the Zen, but I mean, who hasn't looked good on Fnatic? Today, last week, the weeks before, they've been steamrolling through everyone in Europe, and you can see why. They're just working as a unit. It's a symphony, a concerto, and they haven't even hit the last part of the piece. Minute and 45 seconds left. They are rounding the corner here. Only 75% of the way done so far, but that 25 is looking easier and easier the more it's Bittner's 19 streak starts to flare on the bottom of the screen. And he's lurking in the waters here. Not playing Sobek, but he pops up <laughs> over on this pirate barrack. A shark attack happening right in front of our own eyes, and he's just going to continue to play this angle, I think, wait for his next set of cooldowns come up. Bonker, whether he's aware of it or not, whether he's ready for it or not, Bittner's in the back. Wow, wow. and Fischeko's damage, Bittner's collapse at the same time. NIP just not really with the skills in the draft or the ability to execute them at this stage against Fnatic because they are just looking unstoppable. That's the way to do it, though. That's the way Fnatic have always done it, the, the, the synchronized dive into the yeah. back line. So you can't, you have to pick someone, and that means somebody else is free firing Fischeko. He's getting hit by the Dread Serpent, but there's just no follow-up there. There's no legs behind this defense, and, and Fnatic will put NIPs on their butts a second time. NIPs on their butts. Make them eat their peas at the dinner table <laughs> before they go hang out in their rooms at night. That's that's always the worst thing to me. If you have something you just don't want to eat, and then they say, you have to eat this, otherwise you got to leave. I mean, you ever had that moment? Yeah. I, Mom normally, says clean the plate. You're like, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Fortunately, I'm not that picky of an eater. I come from an Italian household, man. You, you eat it all. You're about the food. That's right. right? Not, not too much I'm struggling to, to put down in Mama's house. I get that. Well, let's send it over to guest, to the desk for game two. See what they think about another dominating performance from Fnatic. Man, I mean, good thing these ninjas are already in pajamas because Fnatic is putting them to bed. <laughs> I, uh, I wrote one note. I put a star next to it because I think I wanted to write it a couple times, but ouch for NIP. And just like that. <laughs> was not where they needed to be. The fights they took, they almost, like, they were always little moments that were like, man, this could be great, this could be great, but it never pushed through, and it kind of came to the other side. Evan said it best, I think, where it was just, Fnatic were working like a full orchestra. Everything was going the way it was supposed to. Everyone was doing their part, and there was nothing getting overlooked. It was just orchestrated perfectly from them. And, I mean, there were these individual moments on the side of NIP where it was kind of like, Ah, oh, man, and that also happened, like throwing out the Dread Serpent and then just pushing Bittner to where he wanted to go in the first place. So when things are working against you, that should be complete turnarounds for yourself, then feels bad, man. I did as well, looking at Bittner and the buck. I mean, obviously a quadra kill, usually hard to kind of highlight yourself after that. He just looks happy when he's playing it. I just put smiley face buck for him just because like he is feeling comfortable he doesn't have to go out of his way with genos being able to accompany it those headshots are hitting way too hard for anyone on uh, nip there to actually be able to adapt to it there was no way to really fight him in a one one on one so they were really kind of boxed away i mean we saw it season one when bittner started to make his first statement buck was played by a lot of people but he still seemed to shine above the rest and then here again when it's not as prevalent as it used to be and still bringing Buck through with just the maxing of anything possible. And just the way they were able to go with it. Obviously, I feel like Genos Jera was the one that kind of brought everything together. It's the unsung hero. You got a lot of big streaks. No four-man ults this week. 
so far. But he has been, you know, giving them that extra Fingers damage, crossed. giving them that little push. The healing honestly probably didn't matter as much during that game. They didn't seem to be taking as much as they were giving out, but the damage they were dealing was phenomenal. Yep, so we have another game ahead, and Fnatic could just put everything to rest in this game on Ascension Peak. I am excited to see this because I have not gotten to see Ascension Peak in like a, a big competitive siege, I would say. It's kind of come through sometimes in the PGS, but I've never gotten to cast one of those games. Oh yeah, I'm stoked to see how it works here in the PPL. I mean, there's some interesting ways that you can approach it because of the size of the capture point, and then even some areas, if you want to bring some sniper potential to it, you can. I also love inside the actual spawning chamber, you can get to really high ground just while you're waiting and look down at this beautiful scenery, so. NIP and Fnatic bringing it to the table. You see it as beautiful scenery, but anyone who goes up there here is planning their course of attack. It is a <laughs> war. They are going to it. They're going to be happy. And, well, I mean, let me rephrase that. Fnatic's going to be happy. I feel like this is going to be an interesting map to see how they function, because coming into the third one, this is going to be what NIP want to go to. And it's a little mm -hmm. bit of a fresh take, and normally we've seen a lot of teams, specifically Europe, but I feel like pretty much across the PPL, shy away from new maps for a while. So having it come through pretty much immediately, like just, okay, look, this is where we're going. We're going to fight here. Let's see what you got. I wonder if Fnatic maybe have been practicing on it, whether they have or haven't. I think it's going to show here. I love that it's kind of an overall approach taken by teams within the PPL because it's not like teams ban it away to, to ensure that they don't get taken to it or something. Yeah. Everyone takes a bit of time on their own, and now – that we're seeing it for the first time here in the PPL. I mean, this won't be the last. Genos for the third time in a row, getting prioritization as the first pick. And Inara and Pip actually locked in this time for Fnatic. Oh, but they were reversed. It's been Inara, then Pip, not Pip, then Inara. And so you're so breaking up the pattern. Either way, Cassie and Evie made it through. Mm -hmm. Evie, I want to say not as surprising. Cassie, pretty surprising to see her not only be able to get all the way in. That just shows the respect the Buck and the Zen kind of have earned over on the side of Fnatic, but Genos and Cassie plus Genos and Eevee is just devastating. That Astral Mark is going to be deadly, and Fnatic really need to figure out how they want to take care of that. I mean, so far there are powerful picks on the side of NIP, locking in their first frontliner, Terminus. You've got Cassie and Eevee with law potential, Genos to back them up, but then on the opposite end with Fnatic, you have the Maldamba and Nara combination, Pip, who can do a lot from his position within these types of compositions. And it's going to be double support for the side of NIP with the Ying. I like it. I think it's a little bit different. And it's one of those things that if you didn't have the Genos, if you were just running Ying as a solo support, I'd be like, okay, this now you're going a little bit too crazy. But being able to have that, the Astromark doing kind of gradual healing and Ying being a little bit more focused on that, the damage output from both of them still going to be prevalent. And then being able to augment the other two, this is a lot more of the current meta, I would say. It feels just a lot more now than it does some of the others. Well, well, this is it. Could be the last game if Fnatic manages to close it, or will NIP bring it back? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so I got to give this one to Fnatic because they've got more members from the Siege of Ascension Peak game mode on their team than NIP does. Nothing gets past this guy. Absolutely. I knew what you guys were doing. I mean, the Maeve, the Inara. Uh, who was the other one that they had that was that was so? Because I know the other. Oh, Leon. The, the Leon. Yeah, that's, I mean, those are, those are. That, Leon you, is, you're is gonna win hard there. busted in Siege of Ascension Peak. Hard busted. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's my hot take here. Siege of Ascension Peak, first time seeing it at a very high you know, competitive level here in the PPL. I've seen it twice in the PGS, but they were super corny games. So I, I truly don't quite have my opinion formed on Ascension Peak. Biggest differences with this map is the larger square capture point that has cover. It's two statues on the point. And I'm curious to see if that slows the game down. It slows the capturing down. Both of those Jade statues right there can be hidden behind while you can test and capture the point. And with characters like Ying, who are pretty line of sight intensive, It'll be interesting to see if this is a, an ace in the hole for NIP or just, uh, you know, throw this one out here because we're not really feeling ourselves today. I think the big kind of bigger conversation around EU between these two teams is how do we deal with the Pip, the Genos, and the Inara? It's clearly been Genos and then Pip Inara following up that. And I think NIP have shifted towards, okay, we, we like Terminus as that secondary tank. They've gone towards the Barrett quite often. It hasn't worked as much as we've seen in the past. Fnatic have been able to run that pretty successfully. We've seen the Maeve come out in conversation. 
Uh, but I, I wonder how this Eevee will work. This is one that we didn't get a chance to get a glimpse of. I have a feeling on this map, the mobility and Uber Spady getting a comfort pick finally, a real, real comfort pick. Uh, is, is maybe going to make the difference. All these little windows Eevee can play that. with. Pacheco will be the first to fall. This time NIP draws first blood, and now Uber Spady has his sight set on the support. That was a great shot, though, and this looks like the fight is already won on their end, but anybody can make a play. I cannot believe he hasn't found Jerry yet. Jerry just so aware of where these shots are coming from. Finally! But it takes Uber Spady probably 30 seconds longer than it had to in order to find the kill. Still, Ninjas in Pajamas in the lead now, 36% counting on the objective. Ugly misses that pounce there under some more pressure. You can just see the comfort in Uber Spady right now. First time in the PPL, and it's a good place to find himself on and home with this Eevee. He's very confident. He drew the first blood. He's continuing to put the pressure on the only undefeated team in the EU PPL. So this guy respecting his opponents, but not fearing them. And there's just so much good high ground control. There's so much good left side control. He can play around in NIP. They grab their first objective there. Great shot by Bonker as well, playing a little bit more of the damage support role on the Zen. And this will be the first time Uber Spady does fall this game. Bugsy with a double. Bonker probably has to get out of there. Otherwise, he's going to start to get the ire of the flank. And he gets it right there. Three for Bugsy. And uh, NIP have to back off. A lot of roll switches for here. Uh, Ninja Pajamas had Bird on front line, Sheep on support. Now Sheep seems to be back on the front line. Bonker on, on one of the two supports here. And just trying to find a, a way to make it work in season two. Ninjas in Pajamas hasn't been easy for them so far. Has not been their meta fanatic. No. Have really drawn uh, the long straw this season. And you know, it's just, it's, it's uh, very malleable. Metas are very malleable, and your success in the meta also very malleable. You can kind of make it what it is if you put enough time in, if you if you find that that little niche. We saw Pip get taken a lot more in NA last week and the weeks before, and now EU, obviously always loving him from the Virtus Pro days, but still really just saying, this guy is one, two, three, as far as our priorities. Zebra Spady still showing off on the EV there, blinking in for a little bit of health and back using that card. Flicker in his loadout, Chiba getting trapped, has to back off, getting a ton of healing though from Ying's Illusions and that Astral Mark from Genos. Marking his way through, 74% on the ultimate. Shatterfall's ready, but he just knows Gara's gonna slither it if he launches it there. Deal throws up the wall to try and disengage a bit. NIP with more momentum in this round than they've had all set long combined. That is saying something. Is it saying enough? Fnatic, and I think G2, Cuss has also talked about the fact that it's a good map, but it's a little bit good, it's a little bit too good for the defender, so to speak. And this is the high Look ground. Fortress, it's very, man. very difficult to kind of break. And I think NIP are going to run up against that. Fnatic know what they're doing. They've seeded a lot of ground, but probably not enough for where NIP can push this through quite yet. Oof. Even though he's got his new ability icons here, Perdo on the Cassie does lose that little bit of a duel to Leon. One of the best 1v1s in the game, with or without the ultimate. Fischeko is going to be sitting on that. All of Fnatic are. NIP, just the support ultimates, not fully charged. Seconds I mean, yeah, just look at this fortress. NIP have to push to that little blue circle down there below Fischeko, and uh, good luck to them. Yeah, it's not easy, especially when you have a coordinated defense here, and they're committing to the, the single front line, kind of applying that pressure, and Anara is so good at this. She can block off one zone. She can use the Warriors field on another, but Theo, look at the patience. Hasn't used any one of them yet. Knows over time ticking away. Time is in his favor. Still holding on to the wall, still holding on to the Warders field. Earthen Guards yet again gets the heal from the pimp and then finds a nice shot on a Bonker. That should almost do it right there. Threads the Nito. He's got the wall. Nobody from NIP looks to contest ultimates here. Shiba, he's uh, giving it the old college try. Every second that he sits on this objective, he is gaining increased credits. So, you know, if you're going to go down, might as well go down in the most uh, financially profitable way possible. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yeah, that's true. He's got that Wall Street mentality, man. That's right, man. <laughs> He's a wolf. <laughs> Bury me with my money. With my money. Tell him I was. I was very rich. <laughs> <laughs> Fischeko here. And the duel. Prudeau finds a nice blast shot. He's looked better on the cast. He hasn't had the most star-studded moments today. Still trying to find his rhythm within NIP Point this season. But isn't everybody. Yep. Two, three, two, and three, two, and two, two, and two. Pretty consistent slash lines at the very least here for NIP. Bonkar, one in five, struggling on the support here, but there's a lot of hard dive on Fnatic, a lot of long range poke to be had across the board when you've got Bugsy out there hunting. He's got five killing blows to his name, most in the game so far, and a very all in build. Through time and space, something could happen here. 
Midnight for Maeve. Gonna shut off any of the vision. That's that dark circle around them. Soon it'll wear off. If you have resilience, it'll wear off a little faster, but they don't. Nice street justice. Pounce. Bonker! <gasps> no! no! You vegetable! Bonker maybe tries to go visit Alice in Wonderland, realizes it's just a story. Louis C. Carroll was a writer. Oh, man, and he didn't write in fiction. Non-fiction, excuse me, Theo here. <laughs> taking, a, <laughs> taking a break and just, I think, everyone realizing that this fight ended when their support just fell through a hole. <laughs> what are the comms, you know? What do you say? I'm falling, falling, falling in, in the hole, in the hole. I'm dead, I'm dead. Uh, reset. Wait, is it, what? Is it just like a, uh... Guys. Um, so something may have happened. Because if no one damages him, he doesn't show up on the kill feed, and there's like no, no way for NIP to even know that Bonker's dead. He thought he was what playing Mario. What if he Mario? just didn't tell him? He's just like, uh... <laughs> Damn, guys, we'll get like, him next time, huh? Yo, where's my Astro Mark, bro? We'll it's get like, him next time. He starts, man, it's Bender's real good, man. He's <laughs> real good, man. Explosive flask. 99% for Fnatic here. Looking to probably take this one out due to the unfortunate start there from oh. NIP. Sheba reanimates, though, and finds Jera, but a really good Evil Mojo can't finish him off. The jumping ends up sealing the deal, but Perdo, he's gonna lose that one as Bittner finds the corner. Good healing potion gets himself topped off, finishes up Sheepa, and Fnatic grab it anyway. What a Fnatic uh, little sequence there from Pip. I mean, doesn't get the kill on his Evil Mojo, but you know, that's of course Terminus running his little bit of CC reduction. Bonker struggling though. The sixth man for Fnatic, the well on Ascension Peak. Untold value here in the draft. Very um, interesting. Cute. Going back to that little conversation I had, that non-fiction thing, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he said something that was inter interesting about the fact that there are very few things that are just, that exist based on the negation of other things. And non-fiction is one of those where, I mean, it's basically just saying not fiction, but it's not saying what it is. Not false. Yeah, not exactly. And he's trying to say, you know, let's stand up for our non-fiction writers and claim the word faction. And you can be fiction, we can be faction. We'll have some fun right there. Speaking of factions, Magistrate versus Resistance on Siege of Ascension Peak. Seems to be going the way of Fnatic. They've got more members in the mode, and I told you, that was the real deal. But Genos Cassie, I mean, Cassie's Those are two OP characters, definitely too. Definitely good. Definitely strong. Uh, I've had enough of Genos. I've had enough. I get the supports. I swear to God, I'm IP locked to supports and Sky and, and Siege of Ascension oh, Peak. Oh, of course. I have not gotten Buck once. Really? This whole time, and I've played it a lot. I played like six hours the day it came out. So I'm a little tilted. NIP might be looking that way after uh, the way that round went. Fnatic rolled it right on through, 3-1. A lot of rejuvenate on the board and, and just running it back. Oh, no. Hey! He thought it was Mario, and he could jump down in the portal. You get that. It's it's a really do, 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 cool do, do, little do, do, like music theme, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like we're close to infringing our copyright there, so we're going to stop. But, uh, Bonker, let us know what you found, Five, if anything. Four, All little three, jokes here. They've got to know this game has been a little bit one-sided towards Fnatic, although they had that early objective. It just shifted after that, and maybe that was the, the breaking point. That might have been the morale kind of knife to the gut there. Just made things not very exciting to play with, and Fischeko Oof. finds an early one on Nishipa thanks to an evil mojo from his bitner. Very, very concise. Decisive play coming out of Fnatic, but Perdo's gonna find the answer. He's gonna bounce That's back good. with one of his own. Comeback mechanic for NIP, and they're continuing to find frags. I mean, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. They had that little moment, but now, I mean, imagine a point fight when your healer doesn't fall down that hole and, you know, basically take himself out of the fight. It looks good for an IP. So this is their second chance. Comeback mechanic here. If they zone well enough, Uber Spady on the E might have a chance get back in this game. Shut down some seriously big streaks from Fnatic. So though NIP use a lot of ultimates, they're, they're about halfway back right. charged on all of these. Will they be able to get them charged back in time? Only time will tell. Fnatic are back here. They're ready to get this contest. Big capture point here to slow it down. Ooh, and it just kind of avoids both Genos, Bonker, and Cassie being run by the Perdo. Bubsy finds Sheepa, though. It isolates them enough and forces that solo front line kind of in that position where he is vulnerable. And now... It seems like Bugsy has a little bit of room to run. He's trying to track down Uber Spady, and he oh, does. Oh, Two knives oh. to the gnome. That'll take down the Winter Witch. There it is. Bird in the back line trying to keep Perdo alive. Perdo oh, pops no. the scout, hits the gas pedal, but Bittner's got him dialed in. Now he's got his sights set on Bird. Two quick pops from the potion launcher. Oh, we'll send one of the oldest supports back to base. Fnatic 
with a devastating 3-0 here to Ninjas in Pajamas to continue uh, their undefeated march through the PPL. Unfortunate there for the side of NIP, how that last point fight ended. Some comedy to it, but obviously not funny to them. Still working on that new addition, Uber Spady, to their roster and replacement of Lazy, and we wish them all the best. Obviously, still a lot of work to do in this one, and it would have been a very big upset if they had stopped Fnatic yeah. after making that kind of big sub uh, today. So, as expected, they take first place. Desk, what do you guys have to say about the first set of today? I mean, Fnatic was looking great. NIP managed to get that first point, and then from there, Fnatic once again doing yeah. their thing. And it looked really solid. Uber's PD actually had a really phenomenal beginning to the round, and it was just one of those things that that performance, you could tell he was putting his all into that round, and it just wasn't quite there. And I think a lot of it was the fact that Fnatic just adapted. They were like, okay, you're actually an Eevee we need to be worried about, but did we mention that we have Bittner? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Bittner throughout the entire set was looking great when he was on Buck for the first few games. It eventually got banned away, and then coming through with the Pippin last game, still just crushing it for his team. So even though you had Uber Spady getting on a pick that he's been comfortable with for a while, you had Fnatic on a lot that they feel comfortable with as well. I will also say Ninjas in Pajamas, their entire momentum. First round looks solid. Even though they don't get the push, looks solid. Second round, the minute Bonker falls down, that's all of it. Just like every single thing went out the window right there. I wrote down that Bonker needed Lassie because he fell down a yeah. hole. He was in the well, little Timmy. And unfortunately, he was not coming back out. Or maybe he thought it was like a wishing well and then can go down <laughs> and wish for the win. Genos. Yeah, deposit a Genos, get out the win for the set. But unfortunately, it didn't work that way. Instead, as you saw, Bittner crushing in everybody else yeah. on the team, falling within their comfort zone. And they're going through so far in the PPL without a single loss on their plate. Looking solid. I think the best way to say it was that this is Fnatic's meta. Everything feels good about it. There was a period of time where everyone's like, this was like during the lands, Virtus Pro's meta. This has shifted all in favor. Every single piece is in Fnatic's court or on their chessboard, whatever they're doing. They are taking down everyone systematically. Now, one thing that I do want to clarify in case you're wondering or you have no idea that that is, in fact, a Blue's Clues notebook. Like an official Blue's Clues notebook. I like so. it in my notes. For anybody that was wondering, we've had we've had a long history with oh, that book. That. Yeah, you can't see it from that far. <laughs> Thought that was an important thing. Saw some you know <laughs> questioning on Twitter and everything about whether it was. So everything should be answered. But yeah, Fnatic. I mean, during that time, they're just proving why they are the top seed going through the rest of the week. And as far as what we have to come for our sets, we've got three more ahead. It's just going to be interesting to see because I think that was that's Fnatic for the day. They're gone. You mm -hmm. don't have to worry about them. You get to worry about number two. Now, now V is going to be coming up, I think, in a double header, And I'm interested to see how they're going to be handling it. Because admittedly, the teams they're going up against are the ones that gave us a really good set last week. But it was one of those things that when, when you describe it in tiers, it was kind of there's Fnatic Navi, there's NIP, and then there's VPN Mouse. And so being kind of jumped apart, I would say, being in separate, separate gaps overall, it's going to be tall order for Virtus Pro. Yeah. And NIP will be facing off against Mouse Sports at the end of the day as well, bookending it. So maybe they can find a bit more luck in that category. But that's going to do it for our first set of the day. When we return, we will travel on to our next bit of the PPL. So see you then.